What's up, everybody? Monday morning. Hope everybody had a phenomenal, phenomenal Easter weekend as we are about to do what we do each and every day, identifying some of our major market moves as well as our stock of the day. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, throw that thumbs up icon in there. It means a lot. The computer likes it. I like it. You like it. What's to stop you from doing it? I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, but no, seriously, push the thumbs up button. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, what's going on with our markets. You know, we've come to some new highs as the S&P looks like it's shaking off that that momentum weakness that we were just, it was, it was kind of a cloud hanging over our heads, but it didn't change our major direction. Um, but it doesn't mean that all of our stocks have gone bullish. So we're going to look at a couple of stocks, uh, a couple of uh, a couple of differences between the S&P and our stock of the day. I think our stock of the day is still a bit of a warning sign, and we're going to keep that in mind, but certainly knowing that overall we're still going to be a bit more bullish. So let's go ahead and get started with the big picture. So in the big picture, let's get started by taking a look at the S&P 500. So looking here at the S&P 500, this, the, the last uh, video that I did, I didn't do anything on Friday, wanted to take Good Friday off, uh, and we saw that we had uh, you know, a holiday weekend. So our last video, we talked about a breakout above these highs, and we did get a pretty nice basing here and a breakout above those highs, a bit of an ascending triangle pattern. You guys can see the triangle pattern that was formed here, and a a breakout above that all-time high ascending triangle pattern. That's a really strong entry uh, when those do set up. And so we did get a very big move away from that area. So now what we're looking at is to see what does a retest of this area look like. Um, that 39.83 by 39.77, I got to take that a little bit lower now that I've widened that out. And there's a, a bit of a wick over wick above here. So let's go 39.86 by 39.75. So um, that area there is where we broke out to the upside and continued to run. That would also be a strong area on a retest. Now, same thing exists if we get a breakout above here as a breakout above there would still constitute an opportunity to get long um, because basically that's kind of the rule, right? When we're sitting at an all-time high, you can take breakouts above the all-time high but we're not looking to take too many on the short side. So let's move over and take a look at the NASDAQ, which had been our weaker market. Now, the NASDAQ, if I look at this, we are still nowhere near our all-time high. But important note here, we drew this line as kind of the line in the sand. And we said, if price gets above here, if price gets above this region, then all of a sudden, all bets are off on that weakening momentum in the NASDAQ. And so I'm going to remove a lot of these lines that I have below me. Um, so our weakening momentum in the NASDAQ just isn't there. We've got a four-hour upward trend since we broke above those highs. Uh, and this is where we were looking to say, all right, well, is there a reason to get long? Well, you might have a chance to get long above this high here. Uh, also, down here at this pullback, it's not quite the same one as the S&P, but it is a bit closer to current price with an opportunity to get long on a pullback into that region. Now, you certainly also still have this area down here. So you've got three levels to really look at. The breakout, the pullback one, the pullback two. This pullback here at 13,218 is not as strong as the 12,967. I just don't know if we're going to get it, make it all the way down to here in the next day or so. Uh, let's take a look at crude oil. So crude oil has been really just hovering inside of our range. Uh, note that we've had no basing before our our potential breakout areas, no basing at all before our breakout areas. It's just popped around those levels. And so those levels are still valid, um, but they're not as clean as they once were. And that's going to make me take my lower level, convert it to a confirmation long. My upper level is still very much in play. But other than that, I don't have a whole lot to add here in crude oil. Could be an opportunity for an iron condor for those of you that do play the non-directional options positions in crude oil. And we talked about an iron condor in it recently. And so for those of you that, that, that trade those non-directional uh, options uh, positions on futures, that is still a possibility. Uh, moving over to gold. Now, gold, we had pulled all the way down here, and then kapowee popped right back up. Um, 
it's still inside of our, uh, you know, our bigger range that we'd had a while ago. As we are, you know, still fairly, you know, in this range. But we've not come back up above any of our major swings. And so my question would be, what happens if we get above here? Well, then I think you've got a lot more bullish momentum. My my fear is, is that we've rallied up over the last few days on lower volume heading into a holiday weekend, and then that might lull some investors into sleep. Because if I look at the four-hour trend, the four-hour trend, you know, we've come up. It's it's a nice rally back up, but is it is it enough to change our overall trend direction? Very well could be. Could be that this is just the forming of a base Um you know, as we came all the way down, this could be the start of a kind of a rounded double bottom um, in through here. But I think it's very much at an inflection point. So I just don't see a whole heck of a lot in our equity, in our uh, crude oil or our gold markets for today. I uh, want to take a quick look at the euro. We talked about the euro the other day as it was continuing to come down. Um, we said that we were coming near a demand area, which we got a breakdown trade, came to a demand area, got a little rally up. Uh, and and that demand area, if we come back into that region again today, certainly I would believe that that would get broken through. However, I do want to remove, let me remove some of these lines. If I look at this on the four-hour chart, we can see that our four-hour chart still in a downward trend. We rallied up kind of like we did in gold, but didn't have much follow-through, right? The follow-through is really important on these positions. And so let's just keep an eye on this down here for potential breakdown below there on a lower time period. Uh, if we go even to the 15-minute chart, you could see a small reversal at this level here. Uh, and this was from last night's Globex, although I think that the pivot is going to be a bit better, although not, a, not as clean of a time of day. So I want to put both of those out there on the Euro USD position for today as something to look at and to pay attention to. So those are, our, uh, those are our big four, as we like to call them, although we're adding the euro in there today because the crude oil and gold just didn't give me a whole lot. So let's talk about, you know, we're seeing some strength in the market, but let's talk about a stock that's not showing that same strength, which could be an opportunity to play the other way in our stock of the day. So our stock of the day today is Twitter, ticker symbol TWTR, Twitter. You know, when I think Twitter in my brain, I hear that whistle, right? When uh, when your phone would will give you the Twitter notification or used to. I don't know if mine still does or not. But the point is, is that Twitter is, you know, they've got a revenue stream figured out. However, there's been a lot of, 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 uh, of pullback in Twitter recently. And it's pulled back from 80 to as low as 60. And that's a really, really big pullback for a stock that had gained so much upward momentum early this year. Now, Twitter's always very much in the news. And Twitter does a good job of not being the one that makes the news. However, they, the news makers are oftentimes on Twitter, right? And so Twitter's actually taken a, a pretty big hit uh, since the beginning of February as it's gone, like I said, from 80 down to 63. And those have been a really interesting shape on the pullback, right? We see, um, we see that shape of a move down and then a bit of a rest and then a move down and a bit of a rest. And what I'm interested in is the fact that on Friday we closed on the low uh, after putting in a bit of a higher wick. Now, so, so both of those are interesting to me. However... Let's go back and look at this on a one-hour chart, and I've got my uh, I've got my my daily chart over here as well. Now, on my daily time period, let me get rid of these drawings here that I didn't need to put up there. On my daily time period, what we can see is that we are sitting right at the fifty-period moving average and right below the 20 period moving average. So we crossed below the 20 and then used the 20 as resistance. And so my question would be, are we about to do this shape again, right? As you see, we had another one of those periods where we closed on the high, or closed on the low, excuse me, and then our next candle stayed below the 20 and we traded down from there as a decent swing trade opportunity. Well, look at that on the hourly chart. On the hourly chart, if you notice, look at this, we gap up, 
we sell off. We gap up, we sell off. We gap up, rally up, sell off. So the last couple of days have all looked the same with the gap up and the sell off, the gap up and the sell off. And this morning, we're trading at 64.33 by 64.49 in the pre-market. So what does that tell me? A gap up. Now, if we get lower than Friday's low, I think you've got a very decent entry for Twitter. And that entry for Twitter, in my mind, if you get, once again, you got to get lower than, 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 our, than, than our prior day's low. But if we get lower than our prior day's low, and you've got an entry, uh, maybe, even, maybe even go below this line here. Uh, if you really want to be a bit more conservative, you got an entry below 63.83. Uh, your stop would be above the prior day's high. And so from there, that's where I'd be looking for a decent entry would be shorting below this region with a target in my mind of about 53. I think your eventual target here is 53, which we'll set you up with a really nice reward to risk scenario. Now, once again, this is going counter to the market. And it's really difficult to make money going counter to the market unless something is really that weak. Um, you know, there's still certainly other stocks, many other things that we've looked at over the past few days that are going with the trend direction that you can use that might be a bit better. But I think that this one does give you a potential short setup. All right. Well, that's all I have for today, everybody. I hope you guys have a great, great trading day. Uh, Herman will be in with our live trade room that starts uh, just right before the market opens and uh, and we'll trade over the live open. So if you're not a member of Traders Army, go to tradersarmy.com today. We'd love to have you become a member and join some of our live trade rooms. Until next, until uh, till Wednesday, everybody. Talk to you soon. See ya. Hey, thanks for joining us. If you like what we do, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's the only way the computers know that you're actually alive and really care. And go to tradersarmy.com today to learn a bit more. And if you want to see some of our other videos, click here in the box.